Good morning, everyone. Okay, it's Saturday morning, so don't judge me. <laughs> I have no makeup and my hair is bedhead, I guess. Um, so I am gonna go ahead and cover 12.2. .2. I just thought I'd take advantage of this weekend and try to get ahead on some of these videos. So um, I did run out of ink on all of my pins and both of my cars are in the shop right now. Um, and then we had the freezing weather. So there's just been a lot of stuff going on over here. Um, but we're pushing through. We're going to make this happen, right? So I do want to start with 12.12. .12 and we're going to get down to it. Again, you do want to watch the slides, right? You want to view those slides beforehand. So that way you can... Um, have a reference to all of the information that I'm going to be going over. Okay. Um, I don't recommend that students try to watch these videos before uh, reading those slides because there may be a lot of things in this video that I talk about that you just won't have any reference for them. Okay. So um, for number one, the first thing I want to do, this is um, the second section in the vector calculus. Okay. So the first section was just basically to introduce vector functions, um, but now we're actually going to move on to the calculus with those functions, which includes um, like derivatives and integrals and things like that. Okay, um, so let me go ahead and go with this one section. Um, we're going to definitely extend this on beyond derivatives and and all of that. Basically, like the applications of these things. Okay. So I'm going to write my vector and I always, oops, no primes. Um, my pencil doesn't even have an eraser. That's how <laughs> removed I am right now with everything that's going on. Okay. But in my vectors, I like to put it in vector components, not in the unit vector form. Okay. So I will write four plus T for my I component and then t cubed for my j component, and there is no k component, so I'm assuming this is in two dimensions. And according to that graph that's on the website, it does look like this is um, two dimensions. So then I have this t value here equal to one. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what is it they want from us, and um, what's all that graph stuff down there? So it says find r prime, easy enough. We did that in the last section. Find R of T zero, that's super easy. Just plug in the number that they give you. Um, and then the last thing is to find R prime and that's just plugging in the value they give you into the derivative. The harder part is probably going to be sketch the curve represented by the vector valued function and then also sketching the vectors R of T naught and R prime of T naught, okay? So once I show you, uh, if you read the lecture, slides and you probably already know, but we're just going to go work through these. Okay. Um, eventually I'll be able to do some of the problems a little bit faster because I don't have to explain all of this detail. So I think like numbers one and two are very, very similar. So we'll just keep going. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find our prime of T and that's essentially just taking the derivative with respect to T of both of these um, components. So the derivative of four is zero and the derivative of t is one. So I get just one there. And then the derivative of t cubed is three t squared, okay? Um, and so that's my r prime. That's exactly what I would type into this box. Now my pencil has broken. So bear with me, I'm gonna try to sharpen it. And I'm gonna type in my vectors. Again, I like to enter them as components, um, but how you enter them is completely up to you. You can write them with the I's and the J's instead. Um, that is completely up to you. I just prefer the vector component notation. Um, so when I do work out all the problems, I do work them out in their component forms. The only drawback to doing that is that um, with the I, J, K, format, you know, you can combine all of the I terms together, combine all of the J terms together and so forth. Um, the only drawback to doing it in component form is that the only thing that's separating everything is that little tiny comma, okay? And so you have to be careful to not forget, not forget how to distinguish between your first component and your second component. And there is something 
going on with my sharpener it does not want to work right now. So bear with me. I will get there. I promise. It's Saturday. <laughs> Cut me a break, right? Please. Okay, so let's see. R of T naught is going to be R of one in this case, which means I'm plugging in one into the original R function. Okay. So that means I'm going to plug in one here and plug in one there. And so I end up with five comma one. Okay. Now for R prime of T naught, that means we're going to plug in one into R prime. So R prime is here. Well, there's not, no T's here to plug in one. So that's still one. This value here is the same. But then if I plug in one in the second component, I do get the vector one, three. Okay. Um, let me move my little camera out of the way. So hopefully you can see that. Okay. Now, um, what else do I need to do? I need to sketch them. Okay. So in order for me, this is the way I sketch. You have T and then you have R of T. And so essentially what I do is I like to pick, um, I like to do, usually I do negative one to one, but when I do negative one to one, I also cut it up. So I do like by halves, okay? So I'll do negative one, negative 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, and then one, okay? That's just me. Normally that's enough information to figure out kind of how the graph is moving and in what direction it's moving, okay? Um, so that's just my advice. I mean, you could pick any T values you wanted. This is just usually what I pick. Or I usually also reference graphs. So if you notice, these graphs start at negative one and then they go all the way to six, okay? Um, the other one starts at negative six and goes all the way to um, two. This one goes from negative two to two. And then the last graph goes from negative two to two. So doing it from negative one to one will kind of really give me an idea of what's going on in that region. And then if I need to, I can add some more T values later to figure out what's going either further to the right in the positives or further to the left in the negatives, okay? But I use these values as my basis. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug them all into R of T. So when I plug in negative one, I'm gonna get three. When I plug in negative one here, I get negative one. Now for 0.5, I'm gonna get 3.5 and then let's see what negative 0.5 raised to the third is negative 0 0.125. Now I'm gonna plug in zero. So I'm gonna get four and zero. When I plug in positive 0.5, I'm gonna get 4.5 and positive 0 0.125. And then when I plug in one, four plus one is five and one cubed is one. So if I graph this, let's see what that looks like. I have um, one, two, three, and a negative one. So I have a point over here. It's more like a vector, right? You know that. Then you have, oh, I went the wrong direction. One, two, three, and one. Three and negative one is over here. So the vector is like that. So it's basically all the tail ends of all these vectors. Then 3.5, 3.5 and negative 0.25 would be somewhere real close to the x axis if you're looking at this as x and y. And then Let's see the next one, four and zero is right here. 4.5 and 0 0.25 would, 0.125 would be about there. And then five and one. So I can see for the most part what the graph looks like. So it does look like this with the point at four zero. Now it does appear that there's only one graph that has that, okay? So, Chances are it's going to be the top answer. However, I do want to discuss how to um, graph these. So when you plugged in one to R, you ended up with this vector five one. 
And so it, it literally is an arrow like this, right? So this is R of one. Now, in order for you to plot R prime of one, it has to start where R of one stopped, okay? So this terminal point of R1, R of one, is gonna be my initial point to this R prime of one. So I'm basically gonna scoot over one unit and then go up one, two, three units. And so then the terminal point of my R prime would be up here. So this is R prime of one, okay? So it does have to start where your R of one started, your Y value, and then it that's the initial point of the R prime vector, okay? So let's go ahead and try number two now. So I don't think I entered all my answers though. Let's do, that one was, um, no, 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 no. That one was five one. Five comma one, right? Yes. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one then. No, I didn't. I did one right. I went one over and three up. Yes, okay, good. My brain's like in a million places right now with the cars and the kids and everything. It's just, I apologize. Okay, so we can check that and make sure that it's good since we are allowed to check it per problem. Three checks. Do I have my fourth check? Yay, I do. It says it right there. It's top four at four. So we're going to move on to number two. Now, number two, I actually, hmm, I don't want to do it only because if you notice in number one, in number one, it had something red in here, which means it's going to randomize that part. So your answers are not going to be exactly the same as mine, unless for some reason you get lucky and you get a four like I did. Okay. Um, but if you notice the number two, there's nothing um, red there, which means if I do this problem, um, I'm going to be doing your problem and then you won't have one to practice. Okay. So I'm going to encourage you to do this one on your own. The only advice I can give you is it is going to follow this very much so, okay? It's just your functions are gonna be a little bit different. And, um, but when you're creating your graph, I would definitely suggest that you use these same values to create that graph, okay? Um, and then just remember that once you graph R of um, T zero, that you draw that vector. And then from there, you draw the R prime of T zero, okay? And then just don't forget that when you're taking the derivative um, of anything, if you're taking e to the or the derivative with respect to t of e to the u, anything up here, you basically have e to the u, but then you have to take the derivative of u with respect to t. So for example, if you were doing, I think it has it has two t, but I'm going to say t squared. Let's say I had t squared up here then you have to remember that the derivative will be e to the t squared just the same, but times the derivative of that exponent, which is 2t, okay? So if, as long as you remember that chain rule, um, you should be able to get the derivatives correct, and then therefore when you plug in the numbers, you should get the correct answers, okay? Okay, um, let's keep going, because I don't want to do number two for you. Now let's see number three. Number three, I think I'm gonna use this pencil until it runs out of, out of, it doesn't have much lead left, but I think I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna write R of T in the component form, I always do. So it's gonna be T to the six comma negative 17. And I'm blind, so if I get real close, it's because I can't see. Um, so let's see, we got this one and all they want is R prime. Well, that's nice, that's fair enough. I could do that, right? So bring down my exponent, decrease the exponent by one and I've got it. 
Here it's just um, a constant multiplier. So I'm going to end up with negative seven times one, which is just negative seven. Okay. Um, but -da 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 -da, that's it. So let me type that in there and see if this is good. So 60 to the fifth, comma, negative seven. Okay. Let's check it. We didn't check number two because I didn't do that one, right? Um, so let's just see what we get here. Yay, check mark, that's all we wanted. Okay, let's do number four then. Maybe we can squeeze that one in here. R of t equals four cosine of t and six sine of t. And this one, they did give it to me in the component form already, which is great. Um, that's what I was gonna put it in anyway. But now when I'm doing R prime, um, this is a constant multiplier and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it's gonna turn it into a negative four sine of t and then six and the derivative of sine is cosine. Um, and that's it. So let's go type that in there. Vectors, this guy, negative four sine t get out of the parentheses, and then for cosine t. And if I back out, it should close them all up. Yeah, it did. Oops, what did I do? There it is, let me check it. Oh, it said no, what did I do? Mm. Oh, ha. I typed in a four there instead of a six. That's what I did. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see number five. So, number five has some red in there, so we can definitely work on that one. Um, let's see, I think I can squeeze it in here actually. R of t equals e to the negative t comma three comma four t e to the t. Mm, this one's good. This one's taking us back to all those calculus rules, okay? So they're asking me for our first prime. So remember the derivative of e to the anything is e to the same exponent times the derivative of this, which is negative one. So it's gonna make this negative term. The derivative of three is zero. And here I have to use my product rule. So I have four t times e to the t. So I'm gonna say the first times the derivative of the second, the derivative of this is one, so it's not gonna change it. Plus the second term, times the derivative of the first. So I'm gonna have, or I'm gonna do this differently because later it's just more convenient when you get into some more complicated multiplication derivatives. Um, eventually you're gonna do derivatives with radicals and derivative, like there's gonna be other, I don't wanna say too much, <laughs> but it's gonna get more complicated, okay? And so normally when I was taking Cal one, I would do the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, but I'm gonna reverse the order of that second term, okay? So I do write down the first times the derivative of the second, but then what I'm gonna do is take the derivative of the second first, which is just e to the t times one, which stays e to the t times the original, the derivative of the first one, okay? So the first times the derivative of the second, then the second times the derivative of the first, and you get four. So if I wanna clean this up, it's negative e to the negative t comma zero comma four t e to the t plus four e to the t, okay? So, Oh, my nose. Um, vectors. 
and components. And we're going to type in negative e raised to the negative t, get down, comma, zero, comma, 4t e raised to the negative t. Oh, no, just regular t. Get down plus 4e raised to the regular t. And does that look like my paper? Yes. So let's check it. Check it. Yeah, okay. Now let's move on to number six. So I'm going to go to another sheet of paper. I'll leave this one here for just a moment in case anybody's still trying to write anything, but you can pause the video, right? So I shouldn't need to keep it too, for too long. Okay, so number six, right? Number six, yes. So R of T for number six is, ooh, this one's good. Um, It says arc sine of t, but I'm going to write sine inverse of t. It's the same thing. Um, and then arc cosine of t is cosine inverse of t. Okay. So I am going to write it in this notation. It's the same thing as arc sine and arc cosine. Um, oh, and I missed a term. I have a zero there. And so what they want me to do is they do want me to find r prime of t. Now I am going to have to recall two rules here in order for me to do this derivative, okay? One of them is that the derivative with respect to u, because this is just a dummy variable, of sine inverse of u equals u prime over the square root of one minus u squared. Similarly for cosine, it's negative u prime over the square root of one minus u squared. So I cannot do this problem without these two formulas, okay? So we definitely have to have them in order to complete this. So what do we get? Since my u is just t in this case, it would be t prime, the derivative of t is one, and then the square root of one minus t squared. For cosine inverse, it'd be negative the derivative of t, which is one, and then the square root of one minus t squared. And the derivative of zero is still zero, okay? So for number seven, let's go ahead and type this in here while we're here. So I'm gonna go back to symbols. I think it's under symbols, no operations. Yeah, fraction, comma, fraction. So let's see, we have one over the square root of one minus t squared. Now over here, we have negative one over square root of one minus t squared. Now just FYI, in order for me to get the squares, I don't always click on this button. Um, if you just enter whatever your base is and you hit shift, and the six button, it automatically goes up to the exponent. And then you can just type your exponent in and hit the right arrow to get out of the exponent. In case you're wondering, because you're like, wait a minute, you just typed an exponent, but you never clicked on this button. It's because I'm using shift six to type in exponents. Awesome. Okay, let's keep going. I always feel like approved, right? Whenever this thing tells you yes, you're correct. <laughs> it's like, yeah, got it. I know what I'm doing. Um, second term is t squared minus 16. What are they gonna have me do here? Oh, I gotta do a dot product and a second derivative. Interesting. So first derivative, pretty straightforward take the derivative of all those terms, right? Make sure you keep the little comma separator for the two components, okay? So here I get 2t plus six comma 2t minus six. Here for the double prime, you're essentially just taking the derivative of the first prime. So I get two and zero and then two and zero. 
So it's just two, two. Now for part um, C, you actually have to do the dot product of the two. And we already know that when you dot product two vectors, you end up with a scalar. So what I end up with will no longer be a vector. So I'm gonna have two T plus six comma two T minus six dot product with two comma two. So that means I'm gonna have two T plus six times two plus two T minus six times two. Then I'm gonna write handed distribution, I'm gonna say that's four T plus 12 and then right hand distribution again and I'm distributing a positive two. Um, that is going to be 4t and then minus 12. Now these two will cancel. So I do just end up with the scalar function, which is 8t. So let's enter all of our responses and make sure that this is good to go, right? Let's check it. Okay, yay. Mm. Let's see, R of T equals 2T squared, um, negative 4T, and 1 half T cubed. Okay, now they want us to do the dot product and then also the cross product. Now the cross product does result in another vector, okay? So one of them will have a scalar function result and the other one will have a vector function result, okay? Um, so let's see what we get there. Um, dun, dun, dun. So our prime is gonna be 4t and then negative four, and then three over two t squared. Then our double prime will be four, zero, that two is gonna cancel, so I have three t. And now I need to do the dot product. So that's, I'm not gonna, well, I guess I can write them. I normally don't do a bunch of extra writing, but I'm gonna do it. So 4t times four is 16t plus negative four times zero is zero, plus this term times that term means I'm gonna have nine over two t cubed. Um, so we just end up with nine over two t cubed plus 16. Now for r prime of t cross r double prime of t. This one I'm not gonna, I'm gonna write it out in the vec, in the matrix. So notice that r prime is first, so I must write it in the top row. So 4t negative four and three halves t squared. Then r double prime is next, so that goes at the bottom. Four, zero, and three t. You must put them in that order, first one, top row, second one, bottom row, okay? Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. So let's see what we got here. Um, again, I like to do it in component form. So I'm gonna cover up this one and do those two minus the product of those two, which is just zero. And then here I like to do, you have to do the negative of these guys. So when I do this, I do negative 12t. And then instead of minus, I do plus. And so it'll be plus whatever those guys are. Oh, four times that, one of the twos are gonna cancel. So I get six t squared. And then for the last one, you get zero minus, but then that's a negative 16. So it turns into positive 16. So you get negative 12t, negative 12t plus 6t squared, and then 16. Now let's check to see if all of these responses 
are correct. So our prime was 4t comma negative 4 comma fraction. I'm just going to put 1.5, see if it'll take that. So I don't have to type the fraction button. And then what, t squared? Yeah. OK, and then vectors, components again. For the double prime, we got 4 comma 0 comma 3t. And then for the dot product, we ended up with nine halves, which is 4.5 t to the third plus, so, oops, that was in the exponent. We hit the right arrow now, plus 16 t. And then the last one, we got a vector. And, oops. What negative 12t comma negative 12t plus 6t oops 6t squared comma 16. Okay, let's check it. One, make sure I don't have any typos in there, and two, make sure that we have the correct values, right? Um Come on, oops, I got that one wrong. Negative 12, negative 12 plus 16. Hmm, let's see, maybe I did something wrong. Make sure I wrote down these guys correct. And I do that. Sometimes if I try to do too much in my head, I get it all wrong. So we have covered up this one. We did negative 12 T took away zero. Oh, I see what I did. 4t times 3t is negative 12t squared. Well, negative because I'm doing the opposite. And then these two guys multiplied together are another t squared. So since those go together, I actually should just have minus 6t squared here in the middle because they're like terms. And so I won't have the rest of that. Uh-huh, uh-huh, I see. So be very careful. It's so easy to make a mistake in these things. Oh my gosh, my hair is just bothering me. Yay, see? Okay, now that we made that correction, it is good. And let's check on number nine. These videos I just realized are also really good to kind of give you guys an idea of how long it will take you um, to complete these assignments because sometimes people will go through them and not know how long it's going to take. And so the cool thing about these example videos is because I am essentially going over your homework, um, it does give you a good idea of how long it should take. Now, it does take me longer than what it would take me to complete the assignment because I'm having to explain everything. Whereas if I was just doing the assignment, um, I would be going a whole lot faster and I'd be skipping a whole lot more steps because I can do a lot of them in my head. But um, recording this and having to explain everything out does slow me down a little bit. But still, I think if you take all of that into effect, you know, you guys are learning it and then having to do it, whereas I'm having to do it while explain it it kind of, you know, comes out to like the same amount of time, okay? So let's see, R prime. So we're taking the derivative of R, one, five, and two, t. Now, it doesn't ask me specifically for U prime, but it does ask me for the derivative. I am part B, I am gonna eventually have to take the derivative and some of the stuff in C, D, and E, I'm gonna have to take the derivative. So, um, I definitely want to know what u prime is, even though they didn't explicitly ask me for it. So over here on the side, I am going to write what u prime is just so that I can refer to it later. Okay. So that would be 5, 2t, and then 3t squared. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a little bit. So 
So here they want me to take the derivative of 3r of t minus u of t. Well, what that's going to come out to is 3 times the derivative of r minus the derivative of u. And so see, now I can just plug in what r is, r prime, and then I can plug in u prime. And then that will help me so that I can just do the algebra. Okay, so three times one is three, minus five is negative two. Three times five is 15, minus two t is just 15 minus two t. And then three times two t is six t times, or minus that is just six t minus three t squared. Okay. And then for part C, what does it want? It wants derivative of t times 2t and then u, the vector u of t, okay? So here you do have to do a product rule, but you have a scalar function multiplied by a vector function. So you do still have a product, right? Because there's variables in there. It's not like a constant multiplier. You do have a variable in the front there, okay? So when I go through this one, I'm going to use that product rule. So it's the first factor times the derivative of the second factor plus the derivative of the first factor, which is just two times the second factor as it was, okay? So I'm gonna plug this stuff in here now. I have two T times U prime, which is five, 2t, 3t squared, and then I have plus 2 times u, which is 5t, t squared, and t cubed. And so when I do this, I'm actually going to do this one in pieces instead of all together like I did that one. I get 10t, 4t squared, 6t cubed, plus 10t, 2t squared, and 2t cubed. So then together I have 20t, 6t squared, and 8t cubed, okay? And then for d, what does d want? The derivative of, ooh, now you do have another product, but this time you have a dot product, which is still a product. So I still have to apply the product rule. Now, the only thing is, is that because it's not just regular multiplication, like this had regular multiplication between them, right? Between a scalar and a vector is just regular multiplication, scalar multiplication, okay? And so that's why between these, we just had regular scalar multiplication. When you're doing the dot product and you're using that product rule, you do have to keep the same kind of product in between. So even when I get to part E that has the cross product, I have to keep that same kind of multiplication in between my terms, okay? So if I use the product rule, and this is all talked about in the rules for um, the product rules, okay? In the, le in the lecture and slides. So I'm gonna have this first vector dot product multiplication times the second, the derivative of the second term plus the derivative of the first term, dot product, the second term, right? So it's original pro, um, prime and then prime and original, okay? So let's plug in all the little pieces because I do have R and R prime and U and U prime, okay? So R is T, 5T and T squared. U prime is 5, 2T, 3t squared, big plus, r prime is 1, 5, 2t, and u is 5t, t squared, and t cubed. So then I'm going to do the dot products first, and then I'll add everything together. So I'm going to use a big bracket here when I compute my dot products. So this one times this one is 5t, middle terms multiplied together is 10t squared, and the last components multiplied together give me 3t to the fourth. So it looks like I finished a little early, so I'm gonna close it up.
and put my plus line there. And then open it up here. One times five T is five T. One, or I'm sorry, five times T squared is five T squared and two T times T cubed is two T to the fourth. So I do have to combine the like terms here. I really don't need the bracket since this is a plus. If it were a minus, I would have to distribute that negative, right? But it's all plus. So if I look here, I do have four is my highest power. So three, positive three t to the fourth and positive two t to the fourth gives me five t to the fourth. I don't have any cubes. I do have these squares, both positive. So I get 15 t squared. And then I have these five t's here, both positive again. So I have 10 t. And that's what I get for part D. Now I do still have two more parts. This problem is super long. Um, e is the same thing, but with cross products. So I'm gonna apply the same rule, the first vector function, cross product, the derivative of the second vector product, vector function, um, plus the derivative of the first vector function, cross product, the original second function. And then let's go see what that's gonna look like. So we already know it's basically this whole entire line, but with crosses here in the middle instead of dots, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set them up in the matrix just to save myself some paper. Because I know it's the exact same order, right? These are the exact same order here. It's just this one has a dot in between and mine would have a cross in between. So the first one is gonna go in the top row. And then the second one is gonna go in the bottom row. And the same thing here, these are exactly the same. It's just one has a dot and one has a cross. So if you imagine this with a cross in the middle, this has to go in the first or the middle row. And then this last thing has to go in the bottom row. Okay, so I've got them all set up there and then I actually need to do those computations. So let's see, we're gonna cover this up. That is 15 T cubed minus those guys, which is two T cubed. Then I'm gonna cover this up. Now I'm gonna use a negative. So that should be negative three T cubed. And instead of a minus, I'm gonna put a plus because I'm changing. The middle term always has to be the opposite signs. Um, five T squared. And then finally those two. So I get two T squared minus 25t. And I still have to add whatever I get when I do the next vector. So if I cover this up, I get 5t cubed minus 2t cubed. Then here I get negative t cubed plus 10t squared. And then the last one, t squared minus 25t. Okay, so then what do we get when we combine? If I combine these together, I get 20t cubed minus four. Oh, 20t cubed minus four t cubed is gonna be 16t cubed. They're all like terms. Here, just those are like terms. So we get negative four T cubed plus 15 T squared. And here we get three T squared minus 50 T. And that should be the answer for part E. And then finally we get to um, F. F is very interesting. So let's work on F on another page, but I'm gonna bring this page up to the top. So let me leave that there in case someone needs to pause it to look at part E. You can pause it and then examine it. Um, but I'm gonna move on to part F, but I need my functions from the beginning. So part F is the derivative of R of 5t. 
So to me, what that means is I need to figure out what R of 5t is. So if I plug in 5t for t, I get 5t. If I plug in 5t here, I get 5 times 5t. And if I plug in t there, I get 5t squared. Now I'm not doing the derivative just yet. I'm just going to simplify these expressions. And then I'm going to take the derivatives. So I get 5, 25, and 50t. Okay. And so let's go type in all of these answers in. So let's see, for part A, we got this. Oops, and I messed up there. That should not be parentheses, but the end of a vector. Okay, let's see. Come on, vectors, here we go. And this one was such a long problem. I hope we got all the pieces right and I didn't make any errors. Um, We'll find out if I did. That one is negative 2, comma, 15 minus 2t, comma, 6t minus 3t squared. This one here. That was what we got for part B. Um, I think I have it all in there correct. Yeah. Okay, then part C. Um, this is what we got, 20t comma 6t to the second power, get down, comma, uh, 8t to the third. Okay, now for part D. Oh no, D we ended up with the scalar because it was a dot product, right? So we got 5t to the fourth plus 15t to the second plus 10t. There we go. Now e was a vector. So we're going to go get our vector notation. And we have 16t to the third. This is the one that's like the most complicated. I hope I got it right. If not, I'm sure I'll be able to figure out where it went wrong. I'm just not going to double check it until I know it's not good. Otherwise, I'm going to trust my first instance. 30t square minus 50t. Okay, and then finally, part E, which I have on another sheet of paper, but it is a vector. So for part F, I got 5 comma 25 comma 50. So let's go check these babies and see if we got them correct. Oh, oh, hello, forgot my vectors. <laughs> So all of this, control X, we'll put it in here, and then control V. Now let's see, it looks like everything else is good. The one I was worried about, which was E, we did it perfect. So yay for that one. And then once I put that vector, yep, see, now it's good. Okay, great, awesome. That was the one I was worried about. It was so large, so long. Okay, I still have room here. So let's look at number 10. Okay, this one is the section. I got confused for a second. Couldn't remember if we had already done the integrals or not. So here, I'm gonna put that vector though, because that's a vector. You see the i, j's, k's, those are vectors. So I'm gonna put this in its component form just because that's how I like to deal with the problems. I don't like the i's, the j's, and the k's. It's just me. Maybe you're the same way as me. Maybe you prefer the i, j's, and k's. I can understand if you do it with the i, j's, and k's. I could totally read what you're doing. And I understand it. So if you're doing that on a test, no problem. That's not going to get points taken away or anything like that because you chose to use i, j, k's. Not a problem at all. Okay. It's just me personally, if I'm going to be doing this stuff, I'm going to do it the way I like it. Right. So I like to have it in this form and not that other form. 
And it looks like I made a boo-boo. I typed a three for some reason. That would be bad. Wow. Okay. Okay. So we're doing integrals this time. So essentially what that means is you're going to have, and I'm going to do this the long way so you can understand what's going on, because notice it says right there, use bold C for the constant of integration. And I'm going to explain why it needs to be a bold C and not just a regular C. Now, it probably does it in the slides. I don't remember. It's been so long since I saw the slide, um, probably a week, but <laughs> still, that's a long time for me, um, especially when I'm teaching so many different kinds of courses this semester. But anyway, um, I'll show you why it has to be a bold C and not just a regular C, okay? Because essentially what you're doing, and I'm only gonna do it this way one time and one time only. All the rest of the problems, I'm gonna do it the short way, okay? But essentially what's happening is you're having to do the integral of two T dt, you're having to do the integral of one dt, and then you're having to do the integral of nine dt. And so what happens is that you end up with, um, the two, you add one to the exponent, you divide by the new exponent, and then you have this constant of integration, right? Anytime you don't have bounds on your integral, you're always gonna have that constant of integration, okay? As soon as you do have bounds here, like numbers on the bottom and the top, you do no longer need to write that plus C. They're gonna cancel each other out with the fundamental theorem of calculus, okay? So here though, I would get, one, and then there's no t there, so I'm gonna add one to the exponent, and I just have t to the one divided by one, doesn't change anything, plus c. So again, I'm just using the rule. If you remember that the integral of one is just t, go for it, just shortcut, right? Here, same thing, I have nine, no t's, so now I'm gonna have one divided by the new exponent, and you have this plus c. Now, I can rewrite this. It's going to be t squared plus c, t plus c and then 9t plus c. How about this though? Aren't these equivalent? And I should put c1 because this is a constant and it may not be the same as that constant and it may not be the same as that constant, okay? So I'm gonna put those subscripts on them to keep them separate. And so notice that this is equivalent to that, right? It's just split up. And then that is what they're asking you to write as the cap, the bold print C. You're just gonna do a vector C here, okay? And its components would be that C1, C2, and C3, okay? So that's why you have to have a vector here. So if you just type in the calculator or in the computer plus C and don't put a bold C, it's going to count it wrong. I think I already had somebody working ahead before I started recording this video and they were catching that same issue, okay? So do make sure that you put the bold C, not a little um, scalar constant, okay? Um, that's gonna be the biggest issue in this Cal 3 class is being able to keep track of which pieces are vectors and which pieces are scalars, okay? It's real easy to lose it as you're working through all the mechanics. Um, so that's gonna be our biggest, biggest issue is just keeping that straight, okay? It might not necessarily be the Cal 1 and Cal 2 skills that are your problem. It's just the fact that now in Cal 3, we have the difference between scalar stuff and vector stuff, okay? Um, -da 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 -da. So that's that one. So let me write that in there. And then the other one we're gonna shortcut, okay? And I'll show you how to shortcut without having to write this step, this step, or this step, okay? We're essentially gonna go from here to here, okay? Um, and then if I have to simplify it, I will, but, oops, I'll put that there. So we have T squared, oops, not up there, get down, comma, T comma nine T. And then on the outside, I'm gonna put plus C, but I have to make sure Actually, I'm not even gonna do plus C. I'm gonna hit this vector button and put the C inside. Now let's see if it accepts that. Oh no, it's not that one. That's not the button that I need to use. It's this one, bold with the C. There we go. So submit. It has to be that bold C. Yeah. 
Yay. Okay. So now we're moving on to this one. And we are on number 11 now. So again, I'm going to put it in component form. 4t cubed, comma, 6t, comma, negative 5. And instead of the square root of t, I'm going to write it as an exponent, right? Radicals are fraction exponents. So my exponent on t is a one because it's invisible. There's nothing there. And the kind of radical it is, is a square root, which means it's a two index. I'm going to close that up and put my dt. So then I'm going to have four as my constant multiplier. I'm going to add one to this exponent, divide by the new exponent. Then here, six t, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Five. I'm going to add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And then I'm going to have that plus C vector over here. Okay. So these will cancel. I get T to the fourth. These reduce. I get three T squared. And then this two is going to flip over to the top. So I get negative 10 thirds T to the three halves. And then don't forget your bold C. Okay. So let's go type that in there. I have t raised to the fourth, get down, comma, three t squared, get down, comma, negative. Now that I cannot put as a decimal, so I definitely need to have um, that fraction button. Oops, I don't know what I pushed. And get to the side. Side, 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 there we go, T, exponent, and even my exponent is a fraction, so I'm going to put this fraction, 3 over 2. And then outside, I'm going to put plus C, and you can either go to vectors, hit bold, and type the C inside the box, or you can just highlight and hit control B, and it should bold it. No, it did not bold it, so never mind, you can't do that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, worth giving a try. So bold and then put C. There we go. Now submit. See if we got it all right. <laughs> Yay, you've got the check mark. Okay. Oh gosh darn. Um Number 12, I don't want to do because there's nothing in red there, right? So if I do that problem, and I think I actually did a whole section. I think I remember there was a whole section where none of the problems were in red, none of them. And I did all the homework. Um, so I guess that was a freebie. <laughs> Just make sure you remember that information because if it's on the test, I mean, you got to know it, right? Okay. So be careful with that one. Um, but for this one, just remember that when you're taking the integral, I'm going to help you out just with the first one. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to help you out with remembering how to take the integral of this. Because this one was very difficult to take the integral of. You have to use what's called the um, by parts. And that's a lot to remember, okay? So I'm gonna try to go over it. Now you're gonna have, uh, you basically let u equal one of these pieces and then let dv equal the rest of it. So dv is sine of t dt, which means if you want v, you're gonna have to take the integral of this. And the integral of sine is negative cosine, okay? And then the derivative of u is gonna be negative e to the negative t. Now, by part says you're going to get u times v minus the integral of v du, which is this guy. I forgot to write the dt. Um, negative e to the negative t and vt. Okay. So if I clean this up, I get negative e to the negative t cosine of t then that will turn into negative, negative, negative will be a negative integral of e to the negative t cosine of t, 
Mm -hmm. two. And then notice you have the same issue again. So you're going to have to do by parts again. And so if you do it again, but not with these guys, you're, these are old news. That's when you were trying to integrate this. So we're going to do it again. So u is going to be e to the negative t. du will be the same, negative e to the negative t dt. But dv this time will be cosine of t dt. So then v will be the integral of that, which is sine of t. So then when I do this, I'm going to have my first term the same. Nothing's happening to that. But then this will become u v minus the integral of v du. OK, and if I clean that up, you end up with negative e to the negative t cosine of t. Then this guy and this guy will make plus e to the negative t sine of t. And this and this will make plus, oh no, you got negative, negative, and a negative. So it actually makes it minus, minus the integral of e to the negative t sine t dt. Now I still have to take this integral, but if you notice that matches over here. So if you take the equation, I'm going to rewrite this on the other page, because this is a technique that they talk about in Cal 2, but it rarely ever happens, and it just so happens on this one. So you started off with this integral. And you ended up with this as your answer so far. Now, these things match though. So you basically went in a loop and ended up the same place you started, except you have these extra terms, okay? So what they showed us is that you can algebraically solve this. If this is the statement, this is equal to that, which is equal to that, which is equal to that, which is equal to this, then that means these two things are equivalent to each other. And if they are, you should be able to manipulate them algebraically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this integral on both sides because it's the exact same integral. And then what happens is I end up with two of these integrals equaling these two terms over here. And then you just divide by two. So what you end up with is you end up with this integral, which we were trying to figure out, is equal to one half times these two terms. And so essentially I have found the integral. Now you can distribute the one half and say negative one half, and then this guy, and then positive one half, and this guy, so on and so forth. Some people even factor the E out. So they might say negative one half because the first guy's negative, E to the negative T, so they factored, the one half's already factored out. They factor out the negative and they have just cosine of t left. And since they factor out a negative, you still have another negative to make it positive, right? So if you distribute this, you do get the same thing or the same thing, okay? And so it just depends on how you wanna write that in there. But essentially I have done the first component for you. You just need to integrate the second component and then you'll know what the second component of the vector is, okay? So I just wanted to recap here. I'll leave that there in case you're trying to take a screenshot so you can scribble it down um, as a reference. But I'm only helping you figure out how to do this first component, okay? So now you know how to do the first component. And this is, comes in handy, I swear. If you have one like this on the test, you at least know you've seen it before, right? It's not coming out of the dark, out of nowhere. And you're like, miss, there's stuff on the test that I never saw before. You've seen it if you've seen this video and you're supposed to be seeing these videos, right? So you have seen it. Well, that doesn't mean that it is gonna be on the test. I'm just saying that's an example of the kinds of complaints I get <laughs> is that students will tell me, I never saw that. We never did that in class or we never did that. And we did. You would just either didn't remember or you didn't watch the videos like you were supposed to, okay? so. Stuff like this happens. <laughs> We've got to roll with the punches, right? Okay.
let's keep going. So I don't want to do all of 12 for you, although I did the hard part. Okay, number 13. Ooh, this one's good. This one has bounds on it. Notice it has a little zero and the two, right? Um, now, unfortunately, I'm going to put this in vector form. That's the only thing that's different from mine. So I'm, please just get the lessons, though, even though you see me doing it. Try to do it on your own. Don't just like completely follow mine. Um, try to do it on your own because you want to be able to be to do these things on your own successfully. So how do you find the magnitude? What that means is the square root of this guy squared plus this guy squared. Oops, t squared squared. So what you end up with is the square root of t squared plus t to the fourth, which if I factor out a t squared, I end up with this inside the radical. And then if I follow my radical rules, I can take the square root of each factor individually, just not each term individually. So you cannot take the square root of one, the square root of t to the fourth, but you can take the square root of t squared and then this whole factor, okay? So the square root of t squared is t, but I don't know what the square root of this is, okay? Only if that was like something squared could I like take it out of the house, okay? Now, let's see, we can use, hmm, got to use something here because I can see where it's going, but I don't know. Oh, I know what I did. I made a mistake. T squared times T to the fourth is definitely not T to the fourth. There should have been another square, right? T squared times one is T squared. T squared times T squared is T to the fourth. That's why it's looking crazy to me. I was like, wait a minute. I don't remember. I mean, it's not that it couldn't have been integrated. It would have required some um, trig substitution, which was not my favorite in Cal 2, but it may come up. Um, I mean, there was a whole reason why they taught it to us, right? Because this stuff does pop up. Um, but since mine's a square, it makes the problem, the integration so much simpler. I just have to use u substitution, okay? So we're gonna let u equal what's inside the house and then du would equal to t dt. I do have that t there, I just don't have this two. So this is how it's gonna work. This um, t and the dt are gonna become du over two, right? The t and the dt, these guys become the du over two, this guy then the what's under the radical is going to become a u or the square root of u. So essentially I can factor out that one half coefficient and then u square root of u can be written as u to the one half. And then I can do add one to my exponent, divide by the new exponent or multiply by its reciprocal plus, oh no, not no plus c. We have our bounds there. Unfortunately, our bounds though are for the variables that we're given. So t equals zero and t equals two. Now, depending on how you were taught, some folks were taught to um, but these are t values, so I do have to back sub. So I was taught to back sub. I was taught to plug this guy back in and then just plug in the numbers that you were given. So I have two squared, which is four plus one is five, minus zero squared, which is zero plus one is one. So I end up with the answer four thirds, okay? Some folks were taught that when you do this, you solve for T and then you figure out what this would look like, or you don't solve for T, but if T is zero, then that means U would be one plus zero, which is one. So the new bound would be one for U. And then if you plug in two, you get five. And so the new bound would be five for you, okay? And then when you get down to this, um, you're doing, 
five to the three halves and then one to the three halves, which is exactly the same thing I'm gonna get here because when I plugged in two, I got five, but it still needs to be raised to the three halves. And then when I plug in one or when I plug in zero, I get one and zero, or I'm sorry, one to the three halves is just one. One to any exponent is just one, okay? And so you essentially do get the same answer. It just depends on how you are taught to integrate. Whether when you did the U substitution, you also changed these to U values using this formula here, or you back sub what U was in terms of T and then just plugged in these T values, okay? Either way is fine. I like to use substitution and back substitution and just plug in the original numbers. Um, but some folks like to change everything, even the bounds when they do use substitution. And that is perfectly okay. I will never deduct someone points or anything like that because they chose to do it a different method. As long as that method is an actual tried and true method, it's not something that you thought, oh, well, this pattern seems to be happy and it must work for everything and it doesn't work for everything. You see what I'm saying? So there's a difference <laughs> between just methods that work for everything and then methods that only work for specific situations and you're applying it to a situation where it doesn't apply, okay? So you just have to be very, very careful. Now for number 14, looks like I ran out of pencil in that one. So for number 14, it looks like they gave me R prime. Oh, I didn't even type in my answer. Oh my God, I'm going all over the place. What did we get? We got something weird, right? Oh, weird. What did we get? What did we get? We got this. We got the fraction one over three, and then parentheses five raised to the three over two. Get out of there and then minus one and close the parentheses. No, that's not where the parentheses are supposed to open. That's where they're supposed to open. Not two, where did I get two from? Well, one third parentheses, five to the three halves minus one and close the parentheses, yes. Why does this look funny? I don't know why it looks funny. I guess that's just the way it looks. Let's check it and see if it takes the answer. Five to the three halves is not nice because I cannot take the square root of five, okay? If I could take the square root of five, I would have done it and then raised it to the third power. Um, yes, it's good. Okay, moving on to number 14. For number 14, they gave us our prime. So notice that, and I'm going to write this as 4e to the 2t comma 3e to the t. And then they gave me this information here that r of 0 equals, in a vector form, this is in two dimensions, so I'm going to have 2 for i and 0 for j. And that, that point is also in two dimensions, okay? And then they want me to find r of t given this condition. So I know you remember this stuff from calculus one, right? When we would have to find position vectors and velocity vectors and acceleration vectors, okay? And so if I wanna find r, I need to take the integral of r prime so that I could figure out what r is. And so then the integral of this would be, um, that's just a constant multiplier. So it would be e to the 2t divided by two. And here it's just a constant multiplier. It'd be e to the t divided by one, and then plus my c vector. So really I get two e to the 2t, um, and then three e to the t. But if I wanna know what r is, completely without this um, unknown vector here, I do have to use the values that they gave me. So supposedly when I plug in zero, I'm supposed to get two comma zero, okay? So here, this gives me e to the zero is one. So essentially I just have two. 
e to the zero is again one, so that's just the three plus c equal to two comma zero. So in order for me to solve for c, I'm gonna subtract this over minus two comma three. So that means that the c vector is actually zero and negative three, which tells me that my r of t with the constants and everything is gonna be two e to the two t plus zero, and then e three e to the t minus three. And that's what you're gonna type in as your answer. Vectors two e to the two t comma three e to the t minus three. Okay. Okay, good. Now 15, let's see about 15. 15 wants us to do the integral. Notice this is just a regular integral. I don't even know why this is in this section. I guess I just wanna make sure you remember regular integrals. Um, what does that say? 27 plus two X to the second power and this is a cube index. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is rewrite this as 27 plus two X exponent over index, but because it's downstairs, it's actually gonna be a negative exponent, okay? And then I'm gonna leave that DX on the side. So if I use U substitution, U can equal the inside of the parentheses, then DU will equal two X, um, dx, and I don't have that, no, not 2x, just 2, right? The derivative of 27 is 0, and the derivative of 2x is just 2 dx. Um, so then if I divide both sides by 2, dx will become this. So 0, I do not change my bounds. I just say that's u, and then this is du over 2. So if I add one to this exponent, I get one third. And then if I divide by one third, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And I don't need to put plus C because I do have bounds. I just need to remember that these are X values and not U's, okay? So I will end up with three halves U to the one third from zero to 49, but I still need a back sub. So 27 plus 2x was what I had said u was going to be. And now I can play in my numbers. So 2 times 49, 2 times 49 plus 27. This is 125 to the one third minus, if I plug in 0, I just get 27 to the one third which is um, five minus three, which is two, and that two will cancel with this two. So I just get the value three. I would have never guessed that, so let's see. Now, no one should be using a graphing calculator in this class, and I do mean that, absolutely no one. And when you take your test, you do have to show me the environment, what you have on your desk, um, and what is within reach of you. So if I see a graphing calculator anywhere in your reach, when you're doing that environment check, you will get a zero because you are not allowed to use graphing calculators. I know that a graphing calculator could do number 15 just by you typing it in and it'll tell you the answer's three. But later you're gonna start getting expressions where I need you to know how to do that computation because eventually when they start putting vectors in there and they start doing all these other things with it, you, don't, you can't put it in the calculator. 
there will be a part where you cannot put it in the calculator. And if you were relying on the calculator the entire time in Cal 2, then you really have put yourself at a disadvantage because you won't be able to compute some of these problems with that calculator, okay? Um, you would not be able to, you just, just don't. <laughs> Don't rely on the calculator. I promise you when you get to in the engineering classes, you're going to wish that you had never done that to yourself because then you're going to have to learn everything all over again. Okay. So do not use a graphing calculator in this class. Do not. The only calculator you should be using is this calculator. This calculator will not take an integral. It will actually. It will do an integral. But I really don't suggest that you start putting things in there. Zero. 49. The heck do I have? I would be one over three radical parentheses, 27 plus two X whole squared. I have no idea what it's gonna do. Yep, see it does it for you. But I promise you, you don't want to rely on it. You don't. I can't even explain that to you enough. You just don't. Because later you're going to have to do these things with other multiple variables. Okay. We're in Cal 3. So in Cal 3, I know in Cal 2, y'all started doing some of those um, partial derivatives and all of that stuff. That stuff you can't do in the calculator. And if you were depending on the calculator the whole time, then when you got to that part, you were completely lost because you couldn't put it in pieces in your calculator, okay? So I just strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you do learn your derivative rules, your integration rules, and that you have that stuff under your belt like it's nothing, okay? Because we will get to a point where you just gotta know that stuff. Um, 16 and 17 are the videos, so you can definitely go in there and watch those videos. Um, and then when you're done, you can just submit them individually or you can submit the whole um, assignment. Okay. But that is the end of this section. This is 12.2, um, the differentiation and integration. And I will be, it's still Saturday, but I've got, the kids are gone with grandma. So I'm going to try to get all of the week's um, recordings done and out of the way. So I'm going to move on to 12.3 in just a second. So we'll see you in a bit.